Well, hello again from Kingston, where it was a relatively short working week. One day given to the Canadian Thanksgiving holiday on Monday, and on Thursday, we suffered some of the most atrocious wet weather. But you wouldn't think so to see how much was achieved. And if you're interested, follow through the update and you'll see how far we've come this week. Next week, much more to do, but there always is. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you at the end. There can be little doubt about the most important event this week. Early on Monday morning, whilst gravel removal occurred below, Coco Paving had the tack truck at Pier 12 all ready to go. The paver and shuttle buggy were quickly positioned, awaiting only the first delivery of asphalt, and that would come in a steady stream of trucks throughout the day. Paving work demands meticulous attention to detail and this was provided by a very professional crew. Wednesday dawned clear and bright with two pavers on station. A steady flow of asphalt was maintained with as many as 12 trucks on site. With the bridge deck complete by early afternoon, it was time to address the final lift of asphalt on Gore Road. All this very hard work completed the paving effort on the third crossing. Nearby, but also on the east end, Barr continued work on the holding pond. Sharp landscaping contributed a bulldozer on Wednesday to shape topsoil. Work that was continued on Friday. It was a busy and productive week for Sharp, with a great deal of effort going into hydro seeding the west side. Sharp also played an important role bringing gravel up from below to repair and level the approach that will be used next week by a low boy taking away the LR1200 crane. A crane that was still in use this week, lifting piles from the barge removing them from the river. A total of 10 piles in all, cutting the piles off in shallow water with almost zero visibility, was always going to be a challenge for any diver. None was removed on Tuesday, and on Wednesday, the work was very slow. Things began to come good on a very wet and windy Thursday. After recovering their diver, the crew finally managed to lift a pile from the river. Things went better on Friday too, though an initial effort to lift a pile failed, requiring that the excavator back off and break it before managing to lift it. There were still piles in the river at the weekend, which hopefully will be removed early next week. Black and McDonald placed lights on the bridge this week, which looked something like this. A great deal of work is going on in several areas 
to remove safety structures, including brackets and forms, required during construction. The bridge buggies play an important role, providing a stable platform from which to work safely. Bucket lifts are extensively used too. When there are loads to be handled, it's important to remember the role played by the little Broderson crane. The buggies are in use at both ends of the bridge. As various construction features disappear, it's important to make good any damage or blemishes caused by their previous presence. The same interest in avoiding damage saw two members of the team making templates that will protect the bridge when railings are installed next week. And as we go to wildlife, it's important to note that in case you missed it elsewhere, gravel removal has been continuing steadily, even on Thursday. Well there you go. I think you'll agree it was quite a successful week on the project. There's much more to come. Railings, departing cranes, um, all sorts of work to finish the project and make the bridge look and work well. But uh, more next week. Please consider subscribing, but thanks for watching and bye for now.